everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. We're so happy you joined us today. We really have missed seeing everyone at conventions. Yeah, that's true. We feel like we're out here on an island. We can't wait to get back out there and see everyone. I think Terry could stay in the studio with all his toys and be perfectly happy, but I'm getting very antsy. Yeah, I've got everything I need. My music, my wife, my art. I'm not staying in the studio. <laughs> oh, you're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, she, she's in and out, so. But yeah, this is where all my stuff is, and I've made a lot of books in the last year or two. You have. Yeah. Let's make some more. Okay. Well, speaking of that, Serial 10 came out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, the series is complete. We hope you guys enjoyed the series as much as we did. I know Terry had a great time working on it. The uh -huh. last trade, Cat and Mouse, will be out at the end of the month, and the Omnibus should be out in late March. We're at the mercy of the supply chain at this point, so we're just keeping our fingers crossed and hoping for the best. Yeah, you know how that works now. But yeah. um, well, I think I think we're doing pretty good. I think we have a schedule we can count on. I I I wouldn't say that out loud. I'm so sorry. I said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I don't want to jinx anything. But another new book, the 2022 sketchbook, has been solicited and is slated for June. Um, we will do a soft cover for Diamond and for the retailers, and we'll also offer a soft um, a hard cover just through Abstract Studio. Some more on that later as uh, the time gets closer. June is five months away, so we've got a while to talk about that one. Isn't it strange that we have to solicit and think ahead that far in the book publishing? And, you know, novels go a year in advance. Yes, they do. I mean, I can barely handle five months. <laughs> we are also eight weeks away from Terry Moore Live, April 1st through 3rd. So mark your calendars. It should be a lot of fun. We've done it a couple of times and everybody seems to enjoy it. And so do we. Yes, the live streaming is very fun. And so we have um, lots of art, sketches go very quickly, and live panels all weekend. And the highlight of the weekend yes. is Studio Sunday Live. Oh, of course. <laughs> we should get our own theme music now. Okay, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. That's all I have. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Uh, no, I've been working on the computer and I've been drawing and I have a really pretty sketch here to talk about when it's art time. Okay, well, we're going to have a short um, little intro this week because I only have one question. I need some questions from our loyal followers out there. Okay, I, maybe I've answered all, every maybe, question there. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a, it. You've it come to the end of the internet. I've come to the end of the internet and not once did anybody say, why is there air? You know, or anything like that. It was all comics questions. So That's right. We, we have a very focused agenda. Okay, well, let's get on the hot seat for our one question. All right, I'm ready. How are you doing on your big bottle of ink? Will you change your format when it's gone? Have you considered just using pencils for a series or doing it digitally? What is your, <laughs> what is your take on all that? I love my big bottle of ink and okay so this is vintage pelican ink uh, the new ink is watered down for um, health reasons you know EPA stuff but this is the old stuff that was nice and thick and that's how much is left in it well I think you're giving them the bottle more credit it's actually down to here yeah it's down to there yeah and so I was saying when this bottle is empty I'm done what am I gonna do? Um, the truth is, I have another one. <laughs> you have another one? I do. A big I, bottle? Yeah, I have another one. Oh, enough you're to make gonna be another... drawn to your 100. Yeah, I can go to 100, so don't worry. Uh, when this one runs out, I don't know, maybe I'll draw on it and we can maybe I'll make it give a vase. it to somebody. Make a vase out of it, yeah. <laughs> but this is, I mean, man, Pelican, I wish you would go back to what this was. Okay, so. On to the second part of this question, have you ever considered using pencils? Yes, it's a little, it's actually harder because you have to keep the page clean, uh, all the smudging and everything. But I have sections in Strangers in Paradise that were done in pencil, maybe two, and in like eight pages. It really looks fun. Um, I think it could stand on its own, but you do see all the work on the page. So you'll see the ghosting of erasing and all that. Uh, you, and you just have to take that as part of the fun. 
it's a lot more work to keep a pencil page clean than it is to draw whatever you want with pencil, ink it, and then erase all that smudgy pencil stuff. Yeah. It takes longer, um, but it's prettier. I, you know, I, I naturally draw in pencil. Um, I ink only because I, I have to make a comic, but um, you can get some, you know, the tones, you know, in the grayscale and all that. It really helps things pop. I like that. And then for the inking, I have to use the inking tricks, you know, cross hatching, line work. You get into all the classic illustrator stuff. That's hard. That's hard? It is hard. It makes my brain hurt. <laughs> That's hard. That's hard. <laughs> okay, well, so it looks like you're just going to go back to inks. I have enough ink to carry me uh, farther than I should go. So I think I'm going to be okay. Thanks for asking. Okay, well, that's it for me today. I'm going to go watch some Olympics. That sounds great. Um, good. And I am going to do a, a little segment here and talk to you about this drawing that I've done. Um, if you want to see it, meet me right here. Okay, bye. Bye. So this is Tambi from Strangers in Paradise. And uh, this is a look that Tambi gave a lot in the story. She's tough. She's a tough one. Um, so that's the sketch that I kind of did, just freehand. Um, and I was thinking, well, this would be a good sketch for the upcoming sketch cell. But then I thought, you know, I've probably done, you know, a dozen drawings like this over the years. So I thought, how can I change this up? And I was thinking, you know, her, her partner, her best buddy is Casey. Uh, what if Casey's... She's holding Casey over her shoulder, so I drew that, and then this face looked a little harsh for holding somebody over your shoulder. It didn't look very romantic, so I changed the face. And in order to change the face, uh, what I did was I got out my little my little light box, you know, the little the small one um, from Comic Master Tracer LED A4, and I guess it fits an A4 size paper. Um, Jeff Scott Campbell turned me on to these. I saw it in a video he made. Very nice to have on your drawing board or your lap. And I got Tambi transferred over here, and then I kind of cocked her head a little more and got her to smile. Um, and then I drew Casey over her shoulder, and now it's a sweet moment. So instead of the usual, you know, I'm gonna kick your ass, it's more like, oh, no, never mind. I think I'll take this ass. <laughs> And Casey, of course, they love each other. So uh, this is a very fun moment for the two of them. So anyway, I have Casey and Tambi sharing a, a typical moment. Their relationship is a little uh, like this. And what I'm going to do now is get in there and just start cleaning it up and making, a, making it a finished sketch. So you can see all the other lines that I had on here. Can you see the ghosting? all the other pencil lines that I had on here searching for this, um, and then the other uh, pencil lines and smudges and stuff from the previous face, where it was, and how I moved it. And on this Bristol paper, sometimes these darker pencil leads really don't erase well off of there. Um, they leave a ghost, uh, like an imprint, into the fiber of the paper. Um, so what I intend to do, instead of, you know, retracing again on a light box to get a clean piece of paper, I think it's valid to have the old lines on there. Uh, it lets you know that this is real. It's not a print. For one thing, you you can see the work that made it. I think that's a good thing. Um, this is a very gentle eraser, so it'll take off all the top, everything that's on the top that you don't want, but it won't dig into the paper and get rid of that the best chance you have of getting rid of that kind of a deeper shadow is the white one, this white uh, plastic one. And if you rub pretty hard, you can get pretty good. And I think that that's acceptable. Um, you can still see a faint trace in there, but again, um, it's authentic. And I don't think there's an art buyer out there who doesn't appreciate the authenticity of the drawing you're making. So don't worry about it. Especially if you're using these dark LEDs, um, this is probably an o a three or a four B. Um, 
I can't read it on the pencil um, carbon itself. When I'm putting the hair in front of Casey, I am looking for how can it be flattering without and still show the details that count. You know, you want to see enough eye that you have this good balance. You can see that the face is balanced and all that. You don't want to mess up your drawing by covering up key components of the face. And that's probably it. Every detail is in the right place on Casey. So from this point on, for me, it's just about um, adding uh, the pretty stuff. Like, where does the hair go? If you'll notice on um, Chu and Francine of Strangers in Paradise, they have uh, opposite faces. Uh, Kachu has a short um, surfer girl nose, you know, the California girl nose, the little bob nose. And then Francine has the long nose that I associate with more along the, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know why, I just have these associations. Um, it's just me. Anyway, they have two opposite faces. And what I did for Casey was I blended those two faces. Um, so Casey has the longer, straighter nose. Um, and, but Casey admits to having had a nose job. Beforehand, it was probably um, not as perky. Um, so I picture her having had the same nose job as Marilyn Monroe. Um, she had her nose job done, too, in the late 40s. And it totally changed her look. Um, and then Casey has a thinner lips and um, a prominent, more a more prominent stick out jaw. Not as prominent as Reese Witherspoon, but it it's there. Um, whereas uh, Kachu has a smart, slightly smaller jaw, uh, more of with more of a, which I kind of just thought made her look a little more Polish. Um, Chuvan, uh, Katina Chuvansky, um, clearly, <laughs> she is Polish and Eastern European, and I wanted her to have a look like that. Um, it's a look that I find adorable, and um, I thought Kachu wore it well. Okay, Casey's face is, I'm, not, I'm stopping there, and I'm moving my way from left to right because this pencil smudges, uh, so I don't want to draw this. And then go over here and draw this and get my hand all over it. Although I'm about to kind of do that. If I go to the ponytail and I've drawn these eyes. Okay. Stick with the plan, Terry. Normally, in real life, if you pull a ponytail back up high like this, um, this hair would just be straight. Like a gymnast or a... a uh, swimmer, that hair would be straight back. But um, because it's comics and it's all fantasy, I always give uh, the impression of super thick hair that actually has a rise to it, you know. And that's why you'll see that there's still body on top of the hair, even though this ponytail is super heavy and it pulls tight on this hair. Um, so I cheat. I definitely cheat on that, and no one has ever called me on it just because it looks good. And if I drew it super tight, then it's a totally different look. Okay, these are lines that I will go back in and erase some of the cross lines and keep the key lines. I guess what I'm doing there is trying to find the lines that I really like, and a good way to get these to take on different priorities is to just go in there and spot spot around with your soft eraser and you can see how you get light and darker lines which is a little more realistic looking and then some heavier lines to indicate the flow of where that's going and I try to keep my hand loose and one thing I wanted to do here is drawn as loose hair but I want to get about right here and start a pigtail so this hair is coming in 
right around there. And maybe not a super pigtail, um, but I've seen this adorable thing where uh, someone with long hair will pull it and twist it. So let's just do that. It's just twisted around like a, like a piece of bread. And that way it doesn't look like a lot of time was spent making a ponytail like Zoe's ponytail. It's not really a braid. Eww, that, may, that may look too much like bread, so we may change that, okay? You, I just have these ideas and I think, well, okay, well, I'll draw that. And then after it's drawn, I make a decision about whether it stays. Tambi has gray eyes. And I'll put a little light highlight at the bottom. Um, I just think it shows a little bit of life. the thing here is getting the eyes to match. Oh God, it's so important. I have spent my whole life trying to get eyes to match. Once the eyes match, um, it pulls you in. Look, like the whole focus of the drawing is right here first. You want to look at her first, but I mean, these eyes make you look at her. And then you look over there. So, Tambi is in control. She commands your, re your attention. Tambi still has a straight nose, even though it's been broken. She's a fighter. And then this shadow indicates um, three-dimensional on this nose. Without that shadow, it's just a line here and a line here. And you have to, your mind makes up the difference and says, oh, I guess that's a nose. With the shadow there, it, <clears throat> it looks a lot more like a triangle sitting on top of a plane. So this plane is like this, the curve of the cheek, the nose, the curve of the cheek. So if you were drawing a mask on Tambi, that's how you would, be. the mask would help you define that nose. Um, and the only, way, the only thing I can do is, it, whether it's pencil or ink, Put the shadow under the nose. Okay, lip. And I don't want to get too voluptuous, just attractive. Uh, the last thing Tambi wants to be is voluptuous. Trust me. And never in the story have I ever seen her in lipstick. <laughs> That's not happening. Maybe if they're in a very cold location doing military operations, chapstick. <laughs> okay, got it? You understand the rules? Understand the Tambi rules? Okay, right here is the shadow again. Same as the nose. I put the shadow underneath there just to show the, the depth of the chin. Um, and the back of this neck is not something we can see. It's actually over here, and it's coming back uh, behind this ponytail. Uh, it's coming back like that. And it would not be a curve, a concave like this, because Tambi is very fit. Um, it would have, there's a muscle there. <laughs> so if you ever got to see that neckline right there, it would be like that. Um, You know that there's a very strong muscle here and here going to the uh, the hinge of each chin hinge, the jawbone, and they meet about right there. So depending on whether or not 
you're trying to lift a train or you're just relaxed. It depends on how much you see that. You just have to know it's there. And there's the Abdullah Abangara, that little dip that uh, Dracula loves. And then the collarbone. And the collarbone is actually a protective ring to keep all this stuff, uh, let this stuff come through. It's like a gasket that lets the neck and the head come through and it kind of gives it some protection down here where it's very, there's a lot of sensitive stuff inside there. Um, okay, broad shoulders. So she has her, um, I'm sorry, I forget the name of that muscle, but yeah, it's that muscle is pronounced. And then there is a strong shoulder, bunch of bunch of muscles up in here. So you just kind of like whatever works. There's one overall form to it where it, there's one overall form to it where it comes into a point there, and then the triceps come off here, and then the biceps come off here, and then there's three back there. There's two up front, so there's five muscles for that arm. And Tambi knows where they all are. She's She's worked on each one. <laughs> okay, let's just do the gym shirt. Like that. And probably because Tambi is blonde, um, you know, I would make a darker shirt like this. And it'll also help pop the hair. And it'll help pop the leg. Okay, if you think about her shoulder here, her arm going down behind Tambi's back, and then the back coming up in here, like that. And then here's the small of her back. And then here's like the panty line. And then like that. And then, so what's going on over here is something like this. See it? Okay, that's what I'm seeing off, off page. And so we have the hand here, bracing, bracing the body, and then the shirt here. And we'll put a design on this shirt so you can tell what that is. Um, no, no tattoo. And there you have it. And then it'll just be about a soft, making sure that we have the soft forms on this leg. So there is that one big muscle right there. That there's a machine for that in the gym. The muscle behind and the big muscle up front. Um, and that's kind of it. That's where I'm going to go with this. The rest of it's just polishing. Um, what do you think? This nose is maybe coming too far back. Like that. Yeah, better. This comes down to the details, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna polish this one and I'll, I'll show it to you when I finish. Have fun.